Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can create a telekinesis ability, a levitate ability and so on. That's basically ability to move things around without even touching. So as you can see over here, I have this object. I could just press one key and now I'm able to move it around without even touching it. That's quite useful if I make something like a puzzle game and you just want to be able to, let's say, um, be able to move things around and press certain triggers and things like that. In order to create our levitate ability, I'm going to be using actually our telekinesis ability. I'm going to be using the first person template, but the process is not going to be that much different if you're using any other template or your character itself. So let's go to our first person blueprints. Let's open our player character. And over here, the first thing that I need to do is to set our input. So I'm going to be using a normal input. Let's just search for P key. You can use any input that you want. Uh, input action, anything like that. I'm going to just be using this for testing. I'm going to be using the E key. And over here, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to get a line trace by channel. Just be careful, it's not the much line trace by channel, it is this one line trace by channel. This one over here. And then basically, what I'm going to be get is let's just get a bit of space over here. I am going to be getting our first person camera into here. And then from it, I'm going to get word location, just like that. So our word location is going to be the start of our line trace. Uh, basically, I'm setting this line trace because I need to know uh, what our player is trying to interact with. So I'm going to be check that when I press this E key. I'm going to check uh, which object is in front of him and then set the interaction to the telekinesis ability using this. So uh, the start is going to be our, our location for our camera. And then I need to set the endpoint. For that, let's get from our first person camera, our get forward vector. And then from this, I need to multiply. That's basically you're going to say the distance to the object that uh, max distance to the object itself. For that, let's right click and then place it as to float like that. I think for this, let's say 700. And then I'm going to add from our word location, this new vector, and then place into here. Then our press button into here, just like that. Just get a bit of space because there's going to be one more event like that. And then I need to know if this has hit something for that from our return value get a branch. Then from our out hits, I'm going to break things as well. The first thing that I need to do is to actually know if I'm, our actor is able to use telekinesis in that actor or not. Because I don't want him to be able to move everything in the world. So I'm going to be setting a simple tag for that. Uh, but before that, let's create the object itself that I'm going to be able to move in the world. So let's go to content drawer. And I'm going to make it quite simple. Just that you need to add a simple event and the interface to every object that you want to be able to move in the world. Uh, so let's go to our content forward, content forward, and then over here, right click, select blueprint class. Then let's select our actor. This one's going to be our BP underscore object. Open this up. Over here in the components, let's add a simple group, sphere, anything, anything that you want. And then over here, actually, let's go to our class settings. I'm going to be setting the tag. Actually, it is in our class default. Here, uh, search for tag. Let's add the tag, uh, let's say object. It can be any tag that you want. Compile, save it. And then over here, in our BP first person character or the character that we are using from our hit actor get has tag actor has tag and then place that same tag that you have made it over here that we are going to be checking if it has this tag or not and then get a branch. Uh, one thing that you may have noticed is that why I'm not using a end boolean for this two and placing the same branch. That's mainly because if there is, uh, if he has not hit anything, then I don't want to try to check for this because it would give a error. So for that reason, there are two branches. And then after this, I'm going to be uh, starting to levitate our object. 
Uh, I'm going to be separating two parts. The first one is to start to levitate. The second one is to update during the levitation itself, during the ability itself. And then after that, it's going to be the third part actually. It is to end the levitation. Uh, the main reason for that is that, uh, just that I think it's easier, it's a lot, little bit better if you update it on the event tick. But it's going to cost quite a lot of performance, for, so for that reason, I'm going to be using an interface. So let's go to our content drawer over here, right click, and then let's search for blueprint and then blueprint interface. Let's say this is our late page underscore interface. I'm going to class settings in our BP first person character over here into implemented interface. I am going to be adding that interface, levitate interface, compile it. Now let's go to our object. This is something that you need to do in every object that wants to be able to move around. Add the interface. So uh, actually it was levitate interface, compile it, save it. And now in our BP first person, actually let's go to our, our levitate interface over here. In our first function, I'm going to be calling it, let's say, levitate on levitate. And it's actually going to have, yeah, I don't think I need an input for that, but maybe I'm going to be adding it later. So over here now, I'm going to be calling that event. Uh, but yeah, one thing that I said before is that I'm going to be setting it on the event tick, but I need to set it to start levitating first. Um, I have created the interface. But uh, as I said, I'm going to be updating this in the event tick. And first, I need to actually start levitating the object, and then I'm going to start updating it. So uh, I'm going to go over here and let's right click, select custom event. Over here, our event is going to be levitate. And I'm going to start levitating our object and actually going to be used to update this as well. So the first thing is that I'm going to be creating a variable that is. Uh, let's call it levitate question mark and let's set it over here let's set it to true like that and i am going to levitate our object i could maybe yeah i think i'm going to get a reference for the actor itself there yeah so over here i have this hit actor so i'm going to have a reference for this actor so if this is true, then I'm going to promote this to a variable and it's going to be, uh, let's say, actor to levitate like that. Let's place it up over here. A uh, reroute node down here. Like that. And then up here, I am going to get the event to levitate, but first get our actor to levitate and then get the levitate event but i want the message so disable contact sensitive get the message place it over here get the actor to levitate and that should be good i actually need the location as well i forgot about that sorry let's go to our levitate interface over here let's add the input that's going to be our where underscore location and it's going to be of the type vector compile it now over here, let's get, uh, I get the where uh, location, but I need to get this on the event tick. And the way that I'm going to be setting this up is that I'm going to start levitating, but I need to set this variable as well. But I'm going to have another event that's going to do most of the job to get the location where this object should be moved to. For that, let's get the event tick. And let's enable contact sensitive again, like that. Now from here, I am going to get a branch. This branch is going to check if our actor should be levitating. I could be updating all the time this, but this costs performances. So if I'm not using this, this function, I don't need to be updating this. So that's mainly what I'm going to be doing. Then I'm going to get our first person camera again. Uh, and then I'm going to get forward location then i am going to get our forward vector just like we did up there on this let's get a multiply convert this by right clicking and select to float like that let's make it 700 just like we did up there 
and let's add this vector to this vector like so and then i'm going to get another variable that is where to levitate and this vector this variable is going to be of the type vector i am going to be setting it up here like so and where to levitate and i am going to be calling this event to levitate over there so just scale or I could just uh, use this to start levitating and yeah I, I think i could do that actually it would be a little bit better if i did that i'm going to still leave this as variable because it could be used later for other things but here i'm going to break this link and i'm going to be placing it down here i think it would be a little bit better so just like so like here compile it i got a error let's see what is the problem um uh, yeah there is one of our functions with the same name yeah let's just rename it let's rename it is to start live date like so now should work fine yeah now it works fine because it was because it has the same name so now in our bp object basically what i'm going to be doing is that i am going to get our cube and then i'm going to set word location like that and i need to get that event so let's get event live date over here so when this event is triggered i am going to be updating the location of our cube just like that i'm going to be enable sweep and that should be it compile save it let's test this in our world so i have this vp object that's going to be for the example i am going to be enabling physics as well uh i don't know if you want this enable or not but this is an option for you so over here with our cube selected i'm going to simulate physics and enable it compile it save it now let's get these objects and it's not working for some reason let's take a look what i did wrong so i have this levitate function should be working fine um maybe it's not hitting anything yeah i have not checked any of that ah yeah i don't think i'm calling the event start levitate so let's just call it over here start levitate like so compile save it let's try again let's get this object and now it is working a little bit strange for some reason or was just my impression I don't think it is simulating physics. Ah, yeah, it's not stopping to levitate. I forgot. Yeah, I noticed the problem now. Uh, so I need to add int levitation as well. So for that, let's get another event over here. Custom event. And this one's going to be end underscore levitate. Like so. And basically what this is going to do is to get levitate and set it to false. And I'm going to be triggering this event on the release it. Uh, if you're using put action, this is going to be uncompleted. So just get actually just get the end date like so on release it or on completed if you're using input action. Now let's take a look. So I can get the object. I could just drop it, and of course with simulate physics, uh, it depends a bit on how we are moving the object. It could change things a bit. So let's say if I just start to spin it like that, it would start to spin because there is simulate physics. And if I just drop this, it happens something like that because uh, it is Newton's law. But if you don't want things like that, you could disable simulate physics on the cube. And now it will not be affected by physics. It would be a little bit easier to move around. Maybe if I make a pose or something like that, maybe you're going to want something like this, but it's up to you uh so this was the ability that i want to show you i'm going to be leaving simulated physics enable compile save it and yeah i think that's pretty much it for this ability uh this line trace by chain is something that could be used in a lot of ability because it's a way to know with what your player is interacting with so it's very useful this part over here and yeah you could change the distance as much as you want so that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all sorts of files.
use coupon code MMT to enroll for free.